Hello to everybody and welcome back. This is CT over at the NYC Indian and today we're going to be reviewing Love After Lockup. Don't track me. This is going to be brought to you from an urban Native American perspective, a mixed perspective, and a secular perspective. So let's dive right on in. Before we get started, yes it is a bit dark in here. I tried to turn on every freaking light I can with the exception of candles because this is a typical dreary Pacific Northwestern day. What can I do? This is my best. All right, so let's get into the episode. So we start off with Chance and Taylor. So they're going back to her place. They get there and they finally get to, he finally gets to meet Bobby. He has his whole speech prepared about what he's gonna do and how he's gonna help take off the load and he's gonna be responsible and all this stuff. It's like, all right, listen, you know, Chance, the, she's not the parole board, okay? You can just say it let your actions speak louder than your words you know Bobby is absolutely not here for it okay she knows I mean she just came out of the system herself I don't mean I don't know how long ago but she's not that old so I can't imagine it was all that long ago um and he feels like Bob what he was saying before he feels like Bobby you know he is alluding to the fact that she doesn't contribute enough to the household he feels like Taylor's doing everything. She's, you know, taking care of kids, paying rent, and also cooking, taking care of her sister. But you know what? Right or wrong, right or wrong, that is their relationship. So that's not for him to get in the middle of. You're coming and imposing in on an already um, established family. So, and I mean, look at look at Taylor. If she's willing to take a man home from prison and you know live among her young vulnerable children of course she's gonna let her sister who got out of prison live there she's just you know that kind of person so I don't see her kicking her sister out ever really I really don't so anyway um, after the introduction then he goes to go meet the children and they are just all over him I mean they it's like he's their dad or something I mean they really love him and you know probably whatever how many ever months of that year that they've been communicating that he's you know been able to speak with the children even if it's only six months that's a long time for kids that are that little and the smallest one oh my god if she doesn't look exactly exactly like Taylor so anyway you know, later on, they're, he's playing with the children and throwing them up in the air and having a good time. They're walking the kids to school. Um, and you can see for Taylor, this is exactly what she wanted, especially during that little walk home. You know, just kind of feeling like, oh, this is the family that I wanted. This is, you know, what I wanted with the kids' dads, you know, what? because I, I think the, the two daughters, I think they have different fathers, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, um, oh, but let me backtrack. So after he meets the kids for the first time, they have like their little family dinner, their first sit down dinner. And, you know, Bobby's looking at him like, you know, eating her lasagna or whatever it was like, you're not going to put me in, in no garage, you know, <laughs> like you just try it. Bobby looks like she's just a second away, a second away from popping off on this man. So I am... You know, I'm interested, but I also like that Bobby is there because she can be a second set of eyes to make sure everything is on the up and up. You know what I'm saying? Because when you got small kids, you know, you just don't know people until, you know, you know people. So I just, I felt like he should have went to like a single room occupancy for men, you know, where they have like a shared toilet and you just have your own little room. That's a, that's a way to kind of like, um, you know, sort of reacclimate into society instead of just being, you know, planted directly into a ready-made family that is just too much for someone who's been locked up for a long time now he does seem like he does seem like a nice guy okay i will give him that he doesn't give me scary or pervert or anything like that he doesn't give that to me but you don't know you don't know so this is this whole little experiment is going to happen under the roof with kids so taylor has now procured a job for chance okay her friend through some connection through a subcontractor so he will be going into a plumbing program which i would assume is like a, an apprenticeship because i don't think he has any plumbing experience that i know of um but either way so he's basically walking into a situation where he is he's going to have food shelter sex a job and i guess a car is next i mean he's getting frustrated because now he has to work on his license but now he just found out that it recently got suspended and imagine like you know he's like wait a minute everything's all good now i finally get the last thing that i need which is a job which most people don't do not have waiting for them when they get out of jail and and are as lucky as he is and it feels like he's so close but you know 
just like it's another obstacle this whole suspension so he is frustrated and that is it is understandable but you know imagine just like just for one second just imagine you have been out of the loop you know you've been away let's say you move to a really remote little country place for many many years and you didn't have access to technology and all this stuff and then you move back and now you're in a situation where you have to learn like how to close a browser refresh a page um you know transfer files um uh upload a document you know stuff like the government websites now are just like if you're doing anything else. So, I mean, or, you know, state licensure places, you have to upload these things. How is he gonna know how to do all that kind of stuff? So I know he must be extremely, extremely frustrated, but she needs to watch out because she has to see him. That's the problem, why, that's why you don't move people into your house with your kids like that. Because you need to know how a person behaves at their best and at their worst. And I'm not, I'm not saying that that situation will be a person's worst, but when a person, how they get really frustrated, you have to know how they handle anger and things like that. You have two very young children. So um, yeah, and she's just like, well, he's a little frustrated right now. I'm like, girl, you should have really just like, I, I mean, it's hard, what can you say? I mean, she already made the decision. She, she actually sat and thought, I'm going to bring this man fresh from prison into my house. So, I mean, I can't expect a whole lot of, you know, very uh, wise decision making in this situation. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I will see what happens with the job. But if she gets him a car, like, where is this money coming from? Or is she going to give him her car? Because that would, I mean, I could totally see her doing that too, right? Oh. So now it's time for Rick and Radine, and Radine calls Rick to let him know that, hey, the COVID thing is over and she's going to be getting released. So next thing you know, he's picking her up, and they only have 48 hours together before she will have to go to her, um, is it to the halfway house or something like that? But anyway, when we get to see her, it was like, oh, wow, that's Radine. Okay, so, you know, he sees her, and I mean... Hey, to, to him, she is a vision. So we'll just, you know, we'll leave that at that. And, um, you know, he's kissing her. He's so excited. And she's like turned off by all the kissing. And she just starts going in right away. She's an adrenaline junkie. She can't, uh, you know, she likes the danger. She likes to live on the edge. Listen, I don't know how long this girl is going to manage to stay out of prison. I really don't hurt. Her, her attitude does not seem to be like somebody who's just really happy to be in the free world and like looking forward to not going back. She seems the type to me that who's just going to really enjoy like all the stuff that she's missed but then within, you know, but within like maybe a few days or so, it's going to be, you know, tempted by other things. And I seen once I saw her, right, and just like the whole situation and stuff like that, I feel like, okay, this is why her dad was afraid of her meeting up with Rick. Because even though Rick seems like a nice, calm guy, um, he knows his daughter, and he knows like how wild she is and he probably thinks like she'll run over him and next thing you know they'll be like you know like doing doing drugs together or whatever so i could see you know you could like i said all this situation here was letting us know that there was definitely some rough times with the drugs um oof good lord i i don't know but so anyway yeah they go to her um, mom and dad's place and um, oh, but before they get there, she starts letting Rick know that, hey, guess what, Rick, my old bunkie who's still, you know, in prison, well, that's my girl, Kay, and we're still together, and she's not going anywhere. Basically, you're going to have to deal with it. And he's like, oh, okay, like, what, what, what's up with this? And then now he's like, he's got his first little red flag. Now, you know, if it weren't for the age, I could say, oh, poor Rick, but you know what, Rick? Is as nice of a guy as Rick seems to be, he's still stupid because you shouldn't have went on after somebody who is like, you know, adrenaline junkie, junkie, and you know, well, you know, into different things and stuff like that, and so young and like. You know, where is your common sense? But sometimes people, you know, they just see somebody, they see a face that they like and they know that they're young. They figure, oh, you know, they don't have too much baggage or whatever. I have no idea. Like the onus is more on him because he seems to be the more slightly stable, 
you know, he has his issues too, right? But he seems to have it more together than she does. Obviously, he's free, right? So I just don't understand why he thought that someone like her, especially like her, I'm not saying that there couldn't be some inmate out there that, you know, is really willing to, you know, just kind of calm down, leave that life behind, and really just start a regular family. Like, like you know, Brittany and Marcelino, right? There are plenty of people who can, who can and will do that. Um, and it seems like we get that a little bit more with the women than we do with the men. It seems that way. Um, but... I don't, I just don't know why he's so surprised by that. She doesn't, now that we've met her, oh, she seems like to, like the type of person that he was on the phone with and they were together for a few years they've been on the phone. Wasn't like four years or something like that? It's been several years. I can't see her pretending to be some like little, you know, Susie housemaker type and now it's like he's so shocked. Now he's saying that she's, you know, has a bunkie or you know who he, she's had an intimate relationship and and plans to continue the relationship with in addition to being with him like how did you why are you so surprised i mean he really seems genuinely surprised by that and you know she's happy the parents of course are very happy to see her and um the mom you know her you know, her and her mom are having conversations over corn casserole and and rolls and stuff like that and you know basically Ray Dean's like, you know, I don't really want to be totally settled right now. I mean, I just got out. And then here comes K they, and then here comes um Ray Dean say, Oh, guess what? Kay's gonna be calling in. Yeah, she's gonna be, you know, having a video chat with the family. And then when Rick sees the dad who's been so buddy buddy with him all these years, all of a sudden now this girl is on the on the screen and you know, he's like, Oh, wait a minute. He, you know, the dad already knew about this. The whole family already knew about this. And he is very clear later on that he is not interested in a polyamorous relationship. He said, there's just no way. So we'll see if he really puts his foot down or not. But, you know, to, to, to him, she's a beauty queen. So maybe he will just be enchanted by her looks and will just let all that go. I just, you know, alternate realities. So now we have Alex and basically he is on the phone with Tiffany and she is basically saying that she got in trouble because, you know, she had to, you know, handle some sort of situation with this other inmate, which was like complete BS. You knew you were about to get out. So that should be the red flag right there, right, Alex? Hey, this woman is not necessarily, you know, if, if someone's ready to get out of prison, aren't they going to be on their absolute best behavior? Unless you're being targeted by someone, that's a different situation. She made it seem like, you know, hey, you know, I had to, I had to go in, I had to check her, I had to do this, I had to do that. And it was just like, you know, the, just the poor decision making is just like all over the screen, right? Just no reaction to him putting in all that effort, driving, spending money, all the hours he drove. I mean, it, it was just like, she just didn't even care. It was, it was, it was so obvious in that moment. That's when he should have hung up the phone. But no, he's still trying to reschedule and find out when he can pick her up again. And she's now she's like, well, you know, I don't really know if I even want you to pick me up because, you know, I'm just not sure. Come to find out she's got somebody else from high school. Some other fool. I have no idea. I don't know if they were technically dating or just friends or whatever, but... He wants to pick her up and he's telling his friend and his friend's looking at him like he's a damn fool, right? So now Alex is like scratching his head. He's having, you know, he's hanging out with his buddies at a cigar bar and he's trying to figure out like what he should do. And, you know, should he just pop up because he thinks that there might be somebody else at this point. And, you know, I mean, he could just kind of put two and two together, right? If she doesn't want her, if she doesn't want him to pick her up. So I just feel like, you know, when I saw those clips for the upcoming um, episodes with them, I thought, oh God, Alex, don't get yourself in trouble into any kind of fights or anything. You're gonna risk your freedom for this girl. And it looks like she's eventually gonna be on the show. 
as they showed her in the upcoming um, scenes or upcoming episodes or scenes for the upcoming episodes and she looked like a very cute girl so it, it looks like she was probably like that cute girl in high school who was always flipping her hair and getting in trouble and maybe just never really changed or something like that because at least that seems to be the image that the, that the friend has like you know she, he remembers her from high school like why are we getting locked into fantasies of, of people who they were in high school we are not the same people as we were in high school your brain is not even finished developing and until your early 20s it actually is still developing so I mean it, it, it's like y there's so many things that change right I mean your your personality and things are in your frontal area of your brain so there's so many things that can develop and evolve even into your early 20s so it's like to think that some for someone to be locked into an idea of who a person was in high school is so it's just obtuse. I don't I just don't understand these people. Oh my god, I just like I just don't understand them. So it looks like it's gonna go down. So we'll see what happens with Alex, but I can't wait to see Miss Tiffany. Oh, she's gonna be an absolute wrecking ball. And wait till she meets that little blonde that keeps popping up Alex's ex. We'll call her the ex. <laughs> So now we're back with Indy and Harry, and she's feeling bad that all of this arguing and stuff happened between Harry and his sister. She's feeling responsible because she was the one driving. So she initiates an apology. And I think that that apology, I think that was good of her to do, um, but that was mainly for him to do because he was the one that was, you know, I mean, it's his family, his home, right? He knew that they were making dinner and stuff. So then he starts going on about how he didn't know that people were gonna be there that late and he didn't realize it was gonna be this big affair. So, you know, you know, he shouldn't be to, you know, expected to have known that. And it was a very half-ass apology. So now the sister's basically laying down the rules and but before we even get to that when our, when Ari apologize or what's her name? Indy Indy when Indy apologizes to the sister Within the next breath she goes can we stay here with you guys and I'm thinking to myself Okay, this is what I'm talking about you have moved from Maryland to Ohio, where you know no one but his siblings, okay, who are already discouraging, well, they're very skeptical about you all's relationship. And then with your small child, you go there and then don't have like your own place set up, and then you just are crossing your fingers that his sister's gonna let you stay with him, stay with her. I was like, I know her mother must be absolutely livid right now. She must be lit. I mean, the woman's a bounty hunter for crying out loud. She's already done the background checks and stuff on Harry. She doesn't want her daughter with him. And just imagine to have her grandbaby out there like that. Now, Harry's just like, like I said last week, arrested development. He is just, he's not mature at all at all he's just a big kid and then he says on camera that you know what um i can't guarantee that i'm not gonna do things that will land me back up in prison so he's still about that life okay and this part of the problem is he's hanging out with these guys in the halfway house he has this mentality and stuff and he goes to visit the one friend um uh what's her name i want to call her airy for some reason <laughs> i guess it's harry <laughs> Harry and Harry, no. So Indy drops Harry off at his buddy's place who is um, recently released as well. But it seems like this guy is a little bit more trying to get his stuff together. And he's asking like, are you sure you're ready for all this relationship stuff? And Harry's like, really, basically no. And not only that, she, you know, she found new, um, pictures of other women, nude pictures. But what she doesn't know is that I actually slept with this girl and, when he was back in the halfway house. And it was like... You know only listen what else did we expect right he didn't seem like somebody that was all into her like she's into him so this boy is playing you he's clowning you he has nothing to provide for you nothing absolutely nothing and I'm thinking to myself I just can't believe she's in this situation you know you know Indy reminds me of like one of those friends that you have who is just like super super nice would do anything for you but literally just leaves their thinking cap at home any and every time like they just like just they just the ability not the ability oh, maybe it is ability I don't know but there's just there's something missing there you know what I mean like why would you 
it's always these little kids, these poor little kids like that get attached to these guys. And, and you know, and even Harry is sitting there saying, yeah, the, the little girl calls me poppy daddy. You can see even he was uncomfortable with that. You know, like he needs to just basically say, listen, Andy, it's been, it's been real. Thanks for holding me down. Thanks for the commissary, you know, put money on the books. Thank, thanks for the phone calls. But you know what? Mentally, I'm like about 15 years old and I really need to grow the hell up. And he needs to live his life. Um, but just at the rate he's going right now, it just looks like he's going to be going back to jail very soon. Come on. He didn't even report in with his parole officer. You're having this girl drive around late at night for chicken or burgers, rather, for his for his um, halfway house mate. I mean, come on. This is... Oh, man. This couple and Chance and Taylor are hard for me to watch. But I can even say at least with Chance and Taylor, at least, at least Chance is willing to work. And, and it seems like he's has some kind of something in his head like he wants to do right. Harry? Harry acts like somebody who's basically like a prisoner who got a day pass. Who's <laughs> just like, you know, they know they're about to go back in any minute. You know, um, the handcuffs are about to go back in. So it's like, let's just ride it till the wheels fall off. I just, oh my goodness. So now we have Lacey and Antoine's mom, Christy. Antoine is still currently incarcerated. So... Christy, who is Lacey's friend, who, I mean, do they look like they run in the same circles to you? I mean, because they do not to me. Because Christy is giving me very, very trailer trash, and Lacey is giving me, I mean, I'm not going to say soccer mom, but she's giving like a suburban mom with a regular nine to five kind of thing. They just don't even seem like they would even know each other. I, it's just so odd to me. And then Lacey, you know, taking Christy's suggestion to even meet him. Okay, I'll meet your son who's incarcerated. It just seems like really odd. I, I, I just, I feel like there's so much more to the story than what meets the eye. I need more information. But anyway, Christy is high as a goddamn kite, honey. I don't know what kind of cocktail she was on, but I don't, listen, all we saw was vodka, but I don't know, allegedly. <laughs> and I mean, so she went from let me introduce you to my son to um basically trying to discourage uh the relationship basically saying you know he's no good you don't know him you know he has a history they didn't lock him up for no reason he's a savage like you know going on and on and lacy is feeling completely disrespected and decides to walk out now I don't, to me, I didn't really understand what she was so upset about. She's telling you what her son is. Now, regardless of the fact of whether she introduced him or not, she's giving you facts. Nobody knows him better than his mother. So why, you know, it wasn't a personal attack against you. She's just letting you know what you need to prepare yourself for. And she was really upset about that. But anyway, she stormed out and you know who knows if we'll even ever see this guy on this show or not it will he you know who knows if he'll get released or okay so the last scene is going to be with martel and kayla and they're driving the phone's blowing up every 13 seconds hey yo i got out i got out you know she's trying to have like serious conversations with him especially you know she especially wasn't very appreciative of the phone calls because she wanted to have a conversation about that tracker okay she was like oh no i've done time with you you're gonna do time with me on the outside and i'm gonna track your ass that just that is just absolutely not gonna happen the man finally is out and he's free he does not want to feel chained down by you and your modern electric Electronics that he doesn't even know fully how to function especially that smartphone that he was using so they meet up with his mom and his niece they give him his like favorite meal or something and you know the mom does like Kayla um, and then they continue on on their journey and I'm just you know this is another um, the fact that she has spent over a decade for a woman that is as young as she is who could have been doing some maybe education, post-secondary education, maybe starting a business or, and you know, something like that. I mean, who knows? She could have met someone and started a family by now. I mean, you're, she gave up her good fertile years, basically. Your fertility is also very important as well if you do decide to go on and have children later on. You don't be looking back at 37, struggling to have a child and thinking back, like, oh my God, I spent, you know, this, I waited for this guy for 13 years or how many ever years it, it was behind bars. And, you know, we just have to encourage our little girls. We have, this is like so important. 
because you see women that wind up in these like look at look at Indy how Indy said you know what I got cheated on so many times I just figured I just go poly because you know they're gonna cheat anyway and it's like listen go home hug your kids tell your little girls they're special they're important and we have to show it as well because otherwise their self-esteem can be low and I'm not saying that this can't happen with somebody who got all that stuff because look at Rachel like right remember Rachel and Doug and she, Rachel you know she, a marine and all this stuff and she winds up with somebody like Doug so yes there are exceptions people who had good child hoods and grew up in good homes and good neighborhoods good school systems and stuff and still wind up with inmates that's true but most of these women are not in those situations and it's a self-esteem if you don't think that you deserve better then you're not going to demand better you will literally take the scraps someone who will never be able to provide for you someone who'll never be able to buy a home someone who'll never be able to you know have a car like you're literally going to be taking care of this person paying for them as you're struggling on your minimum wage job with your kids as well it just you know it comes down to self-esteem and we have to teach our girls that hey you know what you deserve more even if hey you didn't see mommy and daddy grow up together you only saw mommy you saw you know daddy once a month on weekends even if that's the case guess what you deserve more than what mommy and daddy had, right? Like you have to instill that in them. They have to have a sense of confidence. You have to tell them they're beautiful so that they don't have to try and make themselves look like something that they absolutely don't look like or that they'll never be. To be okay with their skin, to be okay with their hair, to be okay with their body, with their, their cultural background. Like we have to instill this. Otherwise, you know, we wind up with kids that are on shows like love after lockup I mean you know it could happen to any one of our children but at least we can say hey we gave our kids some good self-esteem some you know something to feel positive about but that's what it comes down to self-esteem do I deserve better than this and a lot of it, it's so sad a lot of women don't really feel that they do deserve more than that they're just happy with the scraps they're just happy with somebody that they know will just be at they'll always be there whenever I call because he can't go anywhere so he's he's tucked away he's safe so I know he can't cheat on me they still cheat on you they still do it it that's not a way to keep someone like you know in some little gilded cage right or <laughs> maybe not gilded but <laughs> you know what I mean so that's it for this episode I just you know I had to do that PSA at the end. I, I just, because that Kayla situation is, it just hurts my heart to watch. I, it just does. But anyway, listen, I hope you enjoyed um, this particular review, I guess you can call it. Um, please guys, stay safe, take care. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. Chippy Salacho, see you next week.